Hello, everybody. The motions that we were expecting have arrived. The other, the second motion that Anne said she was going to be filing is here. And the state has also filed a motion. I'm going to go over them quickly. I haven't read them yet. So here we go. Um, this is Ann Taylor's motion to remove cameras from the courtroom. Comes now, Brian C. Koberger, through his attorneys of records, and files his motion to remove cameras from the courtroom for the remainder of the proceedings in this matter, pursuant to his right to a fair trial and the effective assistance of counsel guaranteed him by the 6th and 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution and Article 1, Section 13 of the Idaho Constitution. And, okay. Camera-wielding courtroom observers have failed to obey the court's June 27th directive to cease focusing exclusively on Mr. Koberger, necessitating the expulsion of cameras from future proceedings. The question presented by this motion is whether Mr. Koberger faces deprivation of his right under the 14th Amendment to due process by the continued televising and broadcasting of his trial. She cites Estes versus State of Texas. And then she goes on to say, recent press behavior in the courtroom clearly demonstrates that such is the case. All right, so nearly two months ago, oh, there's pictures, you guys. Nearly two months ago on June 27th, 2023, the court warned press observers not to focus on strictly on Mr. Koberger and to show a wide shot of the courtroom if they wished to continue filming court proceedings live. Fox News, Brian Koberger issues warning to media at start of hearing on Idaho murders, June 27th, available at, okay, we're gonna go ahead and peek at that real quick. All right. So here it is. All right. Bear with me. I'm looking. Okay. Before addressing the motions, District Judge John Judge clarified some questions regarding his revised gag order in the case and warned the media that he could revoke permission to allow cameras into the courtroom. Okay. Judge referenced the Chad Daybell trial when cameras were asked to leave because they focused too much on the defendant. He said cameras in Moscow needed to show a wide shot of the courtroom and not focus strictly on Koberger if they were to remain throughout the rest of the proceedings. Okay, let me see if there's anything more in this about cameras. Don't see anything else in this article about cameras. Okay. I'm going to link that as well as this to here. Okay. Press observers have thus far failed to comply with the court's direction as the continued publication of images such as those show below continues to present day. Well, that's not what the court order said. That's not what he said. Okay, I'm just going to go and read it. I'm reacting too soon. <laughs> okay, these photos, a blatant violation of the court's directive to cease focusing exclusively on Mr. Koberger in their own right, are also later appended to articles with blatantly sensationalistic in prejudicial headlines and content. The rightmost of the three photos above being used in an August 22nd, 2023 Daily Beast article. Report says Koberger's creepiness with women goes back to high school. Oh boy. Further, the cameras continued exclusive focus on Mr. Koberger provides fodder to observers and purported analysts on social media who are not bound by notions of journalistic integrity. 
Ooh, she's throwing some shade on uh, YouTubers and TikTokers. Okay. And who have potentially an even greater reach than traditional media outlets. Oh, well, thank you, Anne. We do try. Please give me a break. They reach millions. The regular media reach millions. So. Okay. The proliferation of these images and videos is plainly observable on social media platforms such as TikTok and X, formerly Twitter, and posts such as the ones provided below. Oh. court date. <laughs> His fly was down a little bit. Oh, I'm crying. I've got tears. This is too damn funny. Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can read now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my God. You guys, I just thought of something. The people who who um, posted these on X, because we can't say tweeted these on Twitter anymore, are probably dying right now. <laughs> I literally have to get a tissue for my eyes. This is too funny. Okay, hang on. I can't see. Get it together, Debbie. All right. <clears throat> oh, dude, she put the links in here too. Okay, we gotta check it out. <laughs> is Brian Koberger afraid of heights? Because his fly is. Boss, dude, oh, you just, you're getting your 15 minutes now, Betty. Oh, wow. Look at this. Okay, so only 6,884 people saw this previously. Three reposts, 24 likes, one bookmark. The heart it. I retweeted. <laughs> Watch me tweet this guy. Tweet what was it? Man. Rio Toys. Uh, I get a mention by and I always do two there because I have family with that name. <laughs> oh, I can't see y'all. I seriously can't see. <laughs> oh my god. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, okay. Alright. Um Look at the other one. Jesse tweets. Okay. 
what's he so GD happy about? He's not getting an award. He's getting tried for Red Drum. <laughs> look, look. 3,383 views, eight reposts, one quote, 39 likes. Okay, so now you get 40. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, let's I can't see. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> I can't see. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Notification. I did see the news. I don't think they're going to, I really don't think they're going to, oh, somebody's not happy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see what they got here. Okay. As the press itself notes, in the court's 20, June 27th admonition, the court, quote, referenced the recent Daybell trial when cameras were asked to leave because they focused too much on the defendant, unquote. Fox, 20, Fox 13, Seattle, Idaho judge reigns in court cameras in Brian Koberger evidence hearing as trial in student murders looms. June 27, 2023, available at, okay. Indeed, such a parallel was drawn in the defense's prior memorandum on cameras during hearings. Yet camera wielding, really? <clears throat> They're not gun wielding. They're not knife wielding. The whole use of that wielding thing there kind of irks me. Camera wielding courtroom observers remain undeterred. Oh, Anne, come on. The chief function of our judicial machinery is to ascertain the truth. The use of television, however, cannot be said to contribute materially to this objective. Rather, its use amounts to the injection of an irrelevant factor into court proceedings. As previously, as has previously been argued, the circumstances pr present in Mr. Koberger's case are singular and pose an extraordinary risk of prejudice beyond even that posted in Estes. Observers' continued failure to comply with the court's June 27th directive compounds this problem and results in the potential jury pool's constant inundation with conclusory, conclusory sorry, accusations and sensationalistic nonsense guised as factual reporting and analysis. Whereas in Estes, the attendant risk of prejudice was limited to potential jurors watching of television or reading of print media. Now this risk follows the potential jury pool wherever they go, viewable on their smartphones and constantly updated by thousands of unchecked sources. Well, you can go blame Bill Gates for that. I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> wow. Each juror carries with him into the jury box these solemn facts and thus increases the chance of prejudice that is present, present in every criminal case. It is not only possible, but highly probable that it will have a direct bearing on his vote as to guilt or innocence. Hmm. The images and videos provided above were taken during pre-trial court proceedings, but pose no less danger. To the contrary, they gradually poison the potential jury pool, 
prior to um, trial even occurring, winnowing the number of jurors available to render a just biased verdict. Quote, to the extent that television shapes sentiment, it can strip the accused of a fair trial. Unquote. That's Idaho Code 381 U.S. 550. The Estes Court itself noted that unrestricted television coverage can be corrosive to non-trial proceedings and preemptively limit the potential for an eventual fair verdict. And it looks like they're quoting the SS case here. Yes, it looks like, yeah. It is contended that this two-day pretrial hearing cannot be considered in determining the question before us. We cannot agree. Pretrial can create a major problem for a defendant in a criminal case. Indeed, it may be more harmful than publicity during the trial, for it may well set the community op- opinion as to guilt or innocence. Through the September hearings, nope, though the September hearings dealt with motions to prohibit television coverage and postpone the trial, they are unquestionably relevant to the issue before us. As such, far from constituting an undue and over-restrictive burden on the press's right to free speech, expulsion of cameras used to flout the court's limited directive that Mr. Koberger not be the sole focus of images and videos taken is the sole means of limiting what the Estes court expressly recognized to be, quote, a form of mental, if not physical, harassment, unquote. Uh, let's say that's page 15. Um, 549 of that document. Quote, the inevitable close-ups of his gestures and expressions during the ordeal of this trial may well transgress his personal sensibilities, his dignity, and his ability to concentrate on the proceedings before him. Sometimes the difference between life and death, as indeed it is here, dispassionately, freely, and without the distraction of wide public surveillance. Unquote. Another quote, a defendant on trial for a specific crime is entitled to his day in court, not a stadium or a city or nationwide arena, unquote. And she says, similarly, Mr. Koberger is entitled to defend himself against capital criminal charges without cameras focused on his fly. (laughs) Y'all, okay, so I, um, I did the little video about the eyebrows because I thought that was you know, just relevant, just relevant enough to do a video on, but it was just kind of silly, you know, but we've all heard that, oh God, he's trimming his eyebrows thing. So that's why I put that little video up. I did not do any videos on the fly because I thought that was just plain ridiculous. And I certainly wasn't going to, um, I would never impede anybody's dignity in that way to do a video, but it was funny. I mean, I talked about it with people too, but I mean, I don't know if it's, if it's in a public courtroom, we're free to talk about it. That's what the first amendment is. Ann Taylor, free dumb of speech, freedom of speech. God bless America. <clears throat> All right. Item two. Observers' continued minute scrutiny of counsel table is violative of the court's May 16th order governing courthouse and courtroom conduct and distracting to defense counsel. Really? (coughs) A camera across the room behind you where you can't see it is distracting to you? I don't get it. Most people work right under cameras. Ask any Walmart associate. There's like five cameras pointed at them while they're working. You can handle it. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> In addition to the inordinate and exclusive focus on Mr. Koberger, which did not happen, Courtroom observers have routinely violated the court's May 16th, 2023 order, providing in part that, quote, no video or still photograph shall be taken of any papers, documents, or notes 
which may be located on or around council tables or used by council. Okay, well, do we have pictures? What? She calls that a picture of... I'm sorry, I had to scroll down and see what she's talking about. Okay. <clears throat> this noncompliance is clearly demonstrated in the below provided photos taken during the most recent hearing and has continuously undermined the court's stated interest in maintaining order and an environment that per permits all participants to focus on their responsibilities without undue distractions. Aware of the constant attention paid to council table and the risk that confidential and sensitive information could be scrutinized, photographed, and public, published, defense counsel has been forced to divert their attention to ensure notes and other materials are hidden from prying eyes. Well, sweetheart, you put the you put the laptop right there, and I don't think anybody can ever read any of that. You don't. You know the camera's right here. You put the laptop facing this way. That only that literally only makes me. This is just the zoom anyway. That's just the zoom. We could all see that. All right. This exact conduct was found by the Estes Court to be a circumstances depriving the petitioner of a fair trial. Okay, it says the petitioner was subjected to characterization and minute electronic scrutiny to such an extent that at one point the photographers were found attempting to picture the page on the paper from which he was reading while sitting on the council table. Well, that didn't happen here. Oh, goodness. Whereas in Estes, this conduct was characterized as a singular and extreme occurrence in the present case that has become disruptingly routine and must be abated if Mr. Koberger is to receive effective representation. The press have failed to obey the court's directive. This is her conclusion, or to sum it all up, as they say. The press have failed to obey the court's directive, not to exclusively photograph and record Mr. Koberger to the exclusion of all else, jeopardizing his ability to un undergo fair judicial proceedings free of undue prejudice and juror bias. As such, cameras must be expelled from the courtroom for the duration of Mr. Ber Koberger's case, including pretrial hearings, as well as trial itself. Well, like I said, the directive that she's talking about, they're talking about don't zoom in on him and stay there for an extended period of time. I haven't seen that. Have you? I have not seen them exclusively. I mean, every time that any court proceeding is on, you see the defendant come in and sit down. So I honestly don't understand what she's doing, why she's suddenly wanting to bar cameras. What do you think? You think there should be cameras in the courtroom so we can see what the heck's going on? If there were not cameras in that courtroom, we wouldn't know about what happened with Gabriela Vargas, right? We wouldn't have a clue about that. That's not in any document that we've been allowed to see. You know what I mean? So we saw it. We heard what Ann Taylor said, and we heard what Mr. Thompson said. We wouldn't have known about that if it weren't for cameras. I think she might be shooting herself in the foot here. If she thinks that he's not getting a fair trial, she needs to make sure that everybody's watching. In my opinion, I certainly would. I'd want a million eyeballs to make sure that everything's correct. That I don't, I don't like this at all. But tell me what you think. <laughs> and I'm going to um, go wash my face now because I got mascara everywhere. That is just too funny. Um, and then I'm going to come right back and read the other one in just a moment. All right, I'm back. Okay, so there is the other motion that is by the state. 
This is a motion to extend time to respond to defendant's motion to dis dismiss indictment and to continue hearing. All right, so comes now the state of Idaho by and through the Layton County prosecuting attorney and respectfully moves this court for an order extending the time for the state to respond to the defendant's 20, August 23rd, 2023, quote, motion to dismiss indictment on grounds of biased grand jury, inadmissible evidence, lack of sufficient evidence, and prosecutorial misconduct in withholding exculpatory evidence. The defendant's motion was filed, oh, that was unquote, sorry, the defendant's motion was filed on the afternoon of August 23rd, 2023, and was accompanied by a memo in support comprised of approximately 109 pages, 49 pages of which was made up of the defendant's arguments and the balance made up of various exhibits, which included affidavits and other materials. Wow, that's a big document. Dang it. We really wanted to read that, Anne. Okay. Among other things, the defendant's motion asserts detailed factual and evidentiary issues that will require not only review and submission of the entire grand jury transcript. Ah, so it is about the grand jury. So that the court is able to assess the defendant's claims in context, as well as what appears to be a complex scientific representations and disputes. So they're talking about the grand jury and DNA slash IgG. That's what all this is about, or most of it. All right, just absorbing that for a moment. Hmm. Complex scientific representations and disputes. Yep, that's what they're doing. Okay. In light of the above, the state is unable to properly research and respond to the defendant's motion by August 30th, nor be prepared for a substantive hearing on September 1st. Oh, y'all. Really? Sh shoot. The state, therefore, respectfully prays that the court extend the time for responding to the defendant's August 23rd, 2023 motion to Wednesday, September 14th, 2023, with any reply from the defense due September 20th, 2023. The state further prays that the court vacate the hearing currently scheduled for September 1st and reset the same for September 22nd. Y'all, it's almost a month from now. Okay. The state concurs with the defense's request that their grand jury motions be heard at the same time. Consequently, the state prays that the hearing on the defense's prior motion to dismiss indictment based on burden of proof also be continued and set concurrently with the hearing on the defendant's August 23rd, 2023 motion. So he wants these hearings all together on September 22nd. The state has asked defense counsel whether they are agreeable to this request and they have indicated their agreement. See Ms. Taylor's signature below. The state further requests that the court extend time and reschedule as requested without hearing or alternatively set an exped expedited hearing on this motion to extend time for Friday, August 25th. Ooh, that was today. Because of the shortness of time. So if they did it, they did it today. But I don't think they did it because Anne signed it. So, y'all, that September 1st hearing is vacated as well. Now it's the 22nd. Crapola. All right, guys. Well, that is it on these two motions. I'm keeping my eye on the case file. Whenever we have something new, I'll let y'all know. Thanks for watching. Let me know, please, what you think about this as well.